So in PHP Storm, you can actually run API requests directly in Storm. So you don't need a third party tool like Postman to run your, run your requests through, which I think is really interesting. So I wanted to go over the process of how easy it is to do this. So in order to do that, I needed an API to, to run with. So I put together a really simple, simple API. So I've got this login route and all that does except an email and password. And if that user then matches against the database, then it's gonna go, go and create a token using Sanctum and then return as that bearer token. So that way we can use that within our request. And I've got this middleware, this is a fresh install Laravel, so it's, it, this comes out of the box in the API route. I've just replaced the typical return um, a user um, with this off, oh, sorry, with an API request, API resource, and that's just really going to return a contacts resource. And within this this class, we've got the index, the store, the show, the update, and the delete. And it's all, all pretty simplistic, uh, nothing fancy going on. And within the store. Uh, we're just going to validate that the name is going to be required and all it has is so within contacts we're just going to have just the name and that's it just keep it really simple uh, so yeah that's basically the the, the basic api and it, in order to get this set up i've also created a little set setup route and that's just going to create a user if one doesn't exist already uh, so i'm just going to make sure that I'm setting with fresh applications, so nothing actually exists to begin to begin with. So in order to set API requests, you can basically you can create HTTP request files within your project, and that's fine if you want to commit it into your project itself. Useful for sharing across the team with other people using that. But if you just want to experiment and you don't want it to be committed as part of your project, you can create scratch files instead. So what you do is create a new scratch file and select HTTP request. This will create a new blank file and you can write your HTTP request from here. So to get start, get started with the quite simple. So if I just look at, so I just want to run a setup, which is on a get. So all I need to do is type get, and then I just need to put in the actual project URL. So in my case, I've got it. It's just, it's not even using the HTTPS yet. So it's using HTTP, uh, actually no, that's not quite right. I can so it's not even look close in that sense because I'm using valid. So it's actually what have I called this contacts API dot test, and this will be API um, setup. So that's going to call this setup method. So I run that in place, and I want to say accept application JSON, and I think that's all I needed to do at this stage. All right. So if I send that request through. And yep, that's that's gone through. It's created a user. There is no there is no body coming back from this, uh, so that's all fine. Uh, so our user has been set up, and if I just quickly look inside my database, look inside users, I can see a user has indeed been created. Great. So so far so good. Just move so far away so I can close that back down. Okay, so that do do my setup, and then next I actually want to do a login. So I want to send a post request. And again, I'm gonna have to set this, set this up, go to that page. But this time I'm gonna go, I wanna to go to a login route. And again, I wanna accept the accept application JSON. And I also wanna put in the email address, which I'm just gonna use the email address. And then also I need to set up, uh, well, I, there we go. So I'm just using password as the, as the, as the actual password. So always in this case, it will say uh, one thing I forgot to do to separate each request. We put in three hashes and you can also give it a name as well, which is pretty interesting. It's good for uh, kind of documenting the routes that you, well, the actual methods that we're using. So I've got setup and got login. All right. So we're going to go to login, the login route. And we're going to send through the email and the password. All right, so if I just run that through and see how it goes. In fact, I'm just gonna open up a terminal. Okay, so now we're getting this validation back, so the email address and password required. So what I need to do is actually send through the content type of application JSON as well. So if I send that through, and what's going on there? 
There we go. So I send that through and send this through again. So this actually now logs me this time. It actually does return back the token. So I can grab that token and I can then use that for additional requests. And each time you run this, it actually puts into a log file. So you can quickly jump into that file and see what the contents of that request was, which is really handy. Uh, I think they get stored inside your .id file in PHP Storm. Um, so it's kind of temporary, so it's a useful for way of looking at stuff. So next we want to actually go, I'm going to go do contacts, go to the contacts endpoint. And this, this is a route where you need to be authenticated in order to get access to this. So again, I'm just going to put those in. So in the berry token, put in the token we've just put in. Okay, I think that should be all need to run. So I run that and we, yeah, we're getting an empty JSON back because we don't have any contacts yet. So that's quite handy. But already we're, we're duplicating quite a lot of things here. So it'd be handy if we could create um, environment variables and we can do. So if we go to no environment up here and so add um, a private file and we'll work with it as dev. So I'm going to say URL, in fact, I have to go back to here just to grab the, in fact, I'm just going to, everything's going to be the API endpoint. So I'm going to put that in as the URL. And I'm also going to set another one up for token. And I'm just going to grab that whole bearer token, pull that through there as, a, as the actual token value. And then what I should be able to do down here is now just say token. And up here, in fact, anywhere that it gets called, I should be able to say URL. In fact, I'll make sure that, that doesn't have an M4 slash on there. All right, we'll see if that's actually running. All right, of course this isn't working because I've not, I've not actually selected my environment file. So what I need to go, go up here and then click on dev to select my environment file. And now if I run this code, now it actually runs, runs as, as expected. So that way anything I'm using a lot of, I can just specify in my environment variables. The other thing that I did correct just a moment ago was I noticed I changed it uh, as URI, which should be URL. Uh, so that's now set up and I've updated all of these to use those the shortcuts as well, those in environment variables as well. So that's quite handy. And that way it simplifies our, our code quite a bit. And so click on the, on the player and that will run through and we're getting no contacts on there. So next one, I want to go and actually create a contact. So I'm just going to copy this server and I'm going to say create contact. And this will be a post request. And we'll go into the contacts endpoint and we'll send those through. And what I want to do is I'm using Copilot and it's um, interfering quite a bit. What I want to do is put in, there we go. Just put in a name because that's the only field that's required within there. So if I run this now, that should go and create um So it's asking the name field is required. Oh, it's because I've forgotten to put in the application JSON. There we go. So we've got application JSON now. If that's well, I'm just going to move that because for them to be kind of grouped together. So now if I run it, there we go, it actually goes through now and creates a record. So we've got a record ID of one. So what we've got now is we've, we're now set up, we can do the login, do a get request to get the contacts. I can do a post request to get a uh, contact. And what I'll do up here is I'll just copy the server. Back down here, and we're just going to get the contact now. Get the contact being created, or get contact, and so go to the contacts, which would be contact slash, and then the endpoint, and we the, and the actual ID. In this case, it's the one, so it's the one that exists. So now, if we run that, we get our record record coming out of the database, and then finally, what I want to do is create another method called update contact. And again, I'm just going to go to endpoint and I'm going to send through a patch request. And I'll just quickly copy this JSON over. 
So at this point, I just want to change the name to David instead. Right, and then I'll run that. Uh, name field is required, of course, because I have not got the application, the content type set up. I should really put that on every, every request by default, really. And there we go, that's now been updated. So that's now gone to David. So now if we go back to the original contacts endpoint and run that, we now get the David endpoint coming through. So if we go back to the career, run that again, and I'll just run it once more again. And that's the uh, get contacts, right? It's the career one I want to run a couple of times just to create a couple of more records. I don't really care that it's duplicated at this stage. Right, so now if we go back to the uh, the contacts page and run that, we now get the two contacts coming coming back out. So you can quite easily run run the APIs and run everything, make sure it runs smoothly without actually ever leaving PHP Storm, which I think is really cool. Uh, so then you can divide these out into multiple files, move these into your actual project if you want to if you want to archive these and reshare them over. So yeah, maybe you. For a really big API, you might not necessarily want to do this. You might want to leverage something like Postman. But for quick experiments, I found this really interesting to, to run through.